Good morning and welcome to today's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Kurt. Today is Wednesday, the 28th of, of October 2020, uh, and I welcome all of you who are coming aboard on YouTube, on Rumble, and on the podcast. Thanks, thanks for coming on and listening to what I have to say today. Today's uh, discussion is based on the idea, it's based on a blog post, and the blog post uh, starts out with the title, Why Have Borders? And this seems like a kind of an interesting question. And I sort of preface, preface this by saying, look, I don't believe in racism. I don't even really support race. Humanity has a species. We have, as far as I'm concerned, zero races. We have tremendous differences among humanity, and that's a great thing as far as I'm concerned, particularly in the physical aspects of our being. Uh, some some interesting stuff in the cultural things as well, but the thing about it is this. I don't support racism. I don't have any time for racism. I don't even believe it's a real thing, but I know that a lot of people do things in the name of racism that are problematic things. I get that. Uh, that said, even though we spend a lot of time talking about how to eradicate it or how to at least mitigate what happens as a result of racism, uh, I don't support racism in any form. So you might think as a result of that, well, then you probably don't support the idea of borders. You couldn't be further from wrong. And the reason is simple. Uh, I'm going to elaborate on it a little bit, but the main point to take away from this video is this. Borders exist because you have overruling, overarching governments that make the rules, if you will, for how countries operate, okay? And that's not really necessarily entirely a matter of culture. One of the things that I mentioned in the blog, in fact, the blog entry that I made for this, in fact, is that if you look at China, for a long time it had imperial, it had uh, kingdoms, right, that, that ran China. And then over the course of time, they, they came to sort of fall to the point where they, they, they were under pretty, a pretty strong form of socialism. They like to say communism, that never really happened in China, and anybody who says it did, did in my opinion, is quite mistaken. Uh, communism is almost anarchistic in nature, and socialism is the virtually the exact opposite, even though many counted a precursor to communism, something I'm not even sure I believe with, if, even if I believe that you could make communism ever, ever happen. But all that said, what I'm getting at here is, if you look at the cultures that underlie China, and then you look at the government that overarches all of that, that nation, uh, you realize that the underlying cultures don't necessarily match the overarching form of government. And, and the, the thing is, if they did, then you would never have, you wouldn't have a major shift in the type of government that you have in a given entity. But here's the thing. I said that if you look at Canada and Mexico, right, the north and the south of the United States, they tend to be largely more socialist in terms of their government than the United States does, right? That's just how things work as a rule. So, so when you look at that and you kind of go, well, so, you know, what does that say about borders? Well, what it says is since the United States has not tended to be socially socialist leaning, though it's beginning to become that way, though it has not tended to be socialist leaning in the way that we do, do business, if we allowed people just to come from uh, Mexico, from Canada, from South America, into the United States, and by the way, we do this far too much at this point, and it, it's, it's, making some, it's causing some serious shifts in the way the United States does business, but if we just allow people to come from one place to the other without any consideration for what's going to happen as a result, we will end up looking a whole lot more like our neighbors than how we look if we just do our own thing, okay? And again, look, one thing that happens in the United States at this point is people come into the country, they use services that they can get in the United States, then they go back to their home country. Because let's face it, they there there may be things that are bad about their home country, but it doesn't mean that they necessarily hate their home country, 
right? They don't come to the United States because they hate their home country. They come to the United States because they see benefits here that they don't get at home. So the thing is, they come here, they get free schooling. In some instances, they get free medical care and so forth. And the end result is that the people within the United States pay for that. And I'm not saying that the people who come in pay nothing for that, but I am saying that largely who pays for it are the people within the United States, okay? And if those people come to the United States, get health care uh, on the government dime, if you will, and then go right back home, then basically what happens is all of the money that was spent helping that person out is lost and that you can argue if you want that that's fine and good but it's not because it means that we don't have as much to devote to the people who live in the country as we should have because people are coming from outside the country and taking advantage of our systems and that includes for things like education and so forth as i say the other thing that happens a lot of times is people come in and Okay, so I watched this phenomenon in business, and I, and I thought it was kind of amazing. And it was people come from one business to another business who does essentially the same thing. The other business, the business they come to, has been largely successful. They come in, and they start to adopt the policies of their less successful counterparts. Okay, and the thing, you know, you may think that that seems like a kind of a strange thing, but people like what they're familiar with lots of the time, and so that's what they bring in and they don't think about the fact that changing the way they're doing the, that company is doing business is going to change the company uh, in a sort of a very baseline way. They don't think about that. Well, the same thing happens with countries. Countries have ways that they do business. They do the things that they do for specific reasons. And when uh, people come in with differing philosophies, what ends up happening is the place that they come to can become changed by their attitudes. And I, and I make the note that inside places like the United States, we already have people who disagree with what's going on in the country, and they're already trying to change things. And what complicates that even more is some of those things actually need changed. Maybe not the way they think they need to, maybe the way they think they need to, but the point is those things need, need changed. So the problem is you have to try and differentiate between those things that do and those things that do not need change. And that's a very difficult thing. Well, then you throw in the mix that people are coming into the country from other places and they want to change things. And sometimes they want to do things in even more revolutionary, even more basic ways. And they don't realize that the reasons that countries that they came from are less prosperous or less successful is actually that they work in the ways that they work and sometimes in the very ways that they want to change things. So this is a major, major problem as I see it. Here's the thing, uh, you know, you may or may not realize this, but each country, each state is a sort of a lab, right? And what happens within that laboratory, the experiment that's ha happening within that laboratory can be corrupted by outside influences. If people come in from the outside and they change how things are being done, how successful or unsuccessful that experiment might be becomes a whole lot harder to see. And worse yet, because they've changed the experiment, now we know that things inside the country are going to change, inside that laboratory are going to change. And there's very little that can be done about that except try and make it so that those people don't end up making their way into the country. And I know to a lot of people that seems heartless. Oh, but the people in the south of you, the people in the north of you, they're whatever, wherever, they're suffering from these various things. I get that, but what you need to understand is the reason we're not suffering from those things is how we're doing business. And I hate to say this, but whether you like it or not, making it so that the country that they came came from loses those individuals who might have helped them to become more successful is not helpful to those other countries and therefore is not helpful to the majority of people in those countries. They're not going to change the way they're doing business in all possibility because they don't have people thinking that things need to change because we're we're limiting our success and our prosperity. So, so this is what it comes down to for me. You can say all you want that there shouldn't be borders. There are a good many of us who are of a mind that they absolutely must exist. Okay, it's time for me to wrap up this video, so I'm going to do that now. 
Uh, again, today is Wednesday, the 28th of October, 2020. Tomorrow will be the 29th of October, 2020, and will be a Thursday. Uh, we are in the middle of the week, and hopefully you're having a good week. It's rainy and dreary here, but it's not a horrible, horrible day. In any case, I hope you're having a good day, and I hope we will see you again tomorrow. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was created on Wednesday the 28th of October 2020. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for checking out this video. Remember that you can like it on YouTube and you can give it a rumble on Rumble if you want to do that. Uh, I have channels on both YouTube and Rumble. They are the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels. You can subscribe to either one of those if you want to do so. Remember, if you subscribe on YouTube, you probably want to click the notification bell in order to be notified of new content. Um, if you want to see more from me, you can check me out on my blog. That's blogs.kpshubert.com, blogs.kpshubert.com. You can also see my Facebook page, that is uh, Kurt's Religion and Politics on Facebook. You can check out my Twitter, Twitter, uh, Parlor, and Minds.com accounts. My handle on all three of those is at KP Schubert. That's at K-P-S-H-U-B-E-R-T. You can um, check out my podcast. The podcast is at podcasts.kpshubert.com. That's podcasts.kpshubert.com. And finally, you can check me out on Patreon. And if you want to support me, that's probably one of the better places that you can do that. I am Kurt's Religion and Politics there. Thanks again for checking out this video, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.